Okay, guys, we're going to jump right into doing some dynamic cloth on Victoria 4. The way we do that is just open up your copy of Poser, uh, load up Victoria 4. As you can see, she's already loaded in the scene. And all I'm going to do, first thing you're always going to have to do when you're working on dynamic clothes is first turn off the IK. So you want to go to Figure, Inverse Kinematics, turn off the left leg, and then turn off the right leg and the left arm and the right arm if those are turned on. You, know, you want those turned off just because while you're doing posing it's going to cause a lot of trouble if when you're zero frame the inverse kinematics is on and you try to move her leg and it starts moving the entire thing and it collides all with your clothes. Believe me, if you don't understand that weird gibberish I just said, go ahead and try it. It'll cause a big mess. The bottom line is turn this stuff off. Uh, we're going to do another thing to turn it off that always has to be turned off or activated, however you consider this. Go to Window, Joint Editor, and what you want to do is just select Victoria 4 in your scene. Anywhere is fine, you can click her anywhere, and just click Zero Figure. And as you saw, that dropped the feet through the floor and everything like that. Again, just make sure she's in her initial pose. If for some reason you save, save Victoria 4 into your library and she comes in and she's like way up in the air somewhere or 30 feet below the ground plane, bad idea. Yes, your dynamic clothes should load in wherever Victoria 4 is, but some merchants don't always save things like that, and maybe you didn't save your, save your um, dynamic clothes parented to Victoria 4's hip, which is where it should be saved to. No, it should not be saved to the body um, as a smart prop. It should always be saved to the hip. Again, to the hip. There are reasons why it needs to be saved to the hip. Let's not go into it. Let's just say it suffice to say the hip and leave it at that. That way we don't have to discuss it and there's no 50 forum posts about oh why why why. This is one of those things where it's just instructions. Why dad? Well because I said so that's why. <laughs> those of you who have your own kids you understand that answer it's just because I said so. So this is one of those answers. It's experience boy that's why. Okay so let's check this out. Once she's loaded in the first thing we're gonna do is we could load the we could load the clothing in at this point as you can see I've got the Sarah coat and the pants uh, already set up in my props now I could double click these load them in but instead what I'm going to do is show you guys how you don't have to first of all you can decide on your poses first so see here my an animation frame I've got uh, frame number one zero pose everything's zeroed I'm going to go to frame number ten now it's possible you can uh, press your plus button and get another keyframe in here. You don't have to. Um, for what we're going to be doing, I'm only going to need 10 frames for this close to drape over the body, for the morphs to settle in, for everything to happen. So what I'm going to do is just go to poses. I'm going to select the body type that I want. And again, I'm on my 10th frame. This is my last frame where I want everything to be completely done. No more extra work. 10 frames. Now this is just me. I'm not doing an animation here. So we wait for the morph to load in, and once it's loaded in, you can put in any other morphs you might want. If you have magnet sets that you need to load in, you'd load them in here. You wouldn't load any of your morphs on, on uh, one. Okay, so there's one morph. Uh, one issue you might have is if your morph has um, nipples or any sort of body protrusions that, are gonna, that might poke through the clothes, you might want to turn those off or leave this at your pose keyframe for number 10 or whatever your pose keyframe is and then add an additional five frames for the clothes to settle around the nipples or whatever protrusions. Your character might have horns, a tail, whatever. Uh, thankfully the set that I'm using has a morph here called remove nipples. I'm just going to click that and that'll turn those off. Yes, you can actually make the clothes conform around it without a problem but I don't feel like waiting for it. It's just a quick tutorial so why bother? Okay, so I'm loading in a face morph as well. No, there isn't a reason to do it. I'm just doing it. All right, so once that's in, I'm going to choose a pose. It could be any pose, really. I don't want to cover up her whole body, though. Uh, I'll pick this one. It's pretty simple. Okay, so here we are. The pose is in. And what we're going to do is dial from... 
well, also known as scrubbing through. We're going to scrub through the first frame through to the last frame. So I'm going to go back to frame number one, and I'm just going to scrub through just to see how things look. Make sure no body parts colliding with any other body part, which is something that would happen if you were using that inverse kinematics thing. That's a pain in the butt, which is another reason why you turned it off. Like I said, you don't have to know, but once you've screwed up and done it, then you know. You don't have to experience that because I already told you, don't do it. So don't worry about it. Just don't ever have that on while you're doing your um, dynamic cloth simulation. It's a horrible chore to go through and clean that up. Okay, so once you've got that set up, what you can then do is load in your clothes. So for this, I'm going to load in the coat and I'm going to load in the pants as well. So I loaded in the coat, and now I'm going to load in the pants, so I just double click it. And again, this is my product here, so I know how this works. But uh, everything's parented to the hips, so as you can see, if I were to move Victoria 4, the clothes go with it. If I have Victoria 4 in a scene already, and she's way off in the distance somewhere, these clothes will pop right in exactly where they need to be. And because they're parented to the hip, everything with the simulation will work out a lot better than if it's paired into the body, and then the clothes could be positioned in who knows what position depending on what morphs you've got set in there and how the character file has been set up okay so once this is in we're going to quickly do our simulation we're going to click on the Tessera coat click new simulation I only have 10 frames so I'm switching this to 10 I'm going to choose cloth simulation because there are things in this that uh, collide with one another drape frames that's like draping a sheet over say a, a bed do you want it to drape first and look nice and pretty uh, does the body form just need a couple frames of fixeroo? Maybe. Uh, so go ahead and just—I'm just choosing two. And the reason, the main reason why I do that is just for the ears, because I know this hood needs to settle over Victoria Ford's ears. Otherwise, the ears will probably poke right through. Uh, I'm going to choose clothify. Yes, on the coat. And then I'm going to choose collide against. I'm going to choose Victoria 4. I'm going to click OK. And since it's the code, I can choose ignore the hand and ignore the feet. How close do I want it? I'll just leave it at 1, you know. Normally I'd change that to something closer, but it uh, should be fine. Um, now that that animation is set up, I'm going to do the pants. So I click the pants right here to Sarah Pants. New simulation. Again, I'm only going to 10 frames. It's seen right here. Uh, cloth simulation for this, yes, I want the self-collision. Uh, drape frames, no, we don't need to worry about the drape frames in the pants. They're already skin tight there. Uh, clothify the pants, make sure you have pants selected. And At this point you'll be doing the same thing that you did last time, which is choosing what you want the pants to collide with. So you're going to choose Victoria 4. However, when you're working with the pants, the pants in any simulation don't normally need to collide with the shirt. Uh, in this case, the coat, so what I'm going to do is turn that off. I'm going to tell it to ignore the hands because these are pants. I'll tell it to ignore the head because these are pants. Anything else in the simulation the pants aren't going to collide with, also turn that off, but this is fine for what we need. Uh, at this point, all we do is run the simulation. So what I'm going to do, instead of watching it here, I'm going to go to the pose. We have two items of clothing, so what I'm going to do is choose um, outline mode, which will make the simulation run faster, especially if you have a slow computer. I'm going to choose animation and do the calculations for all the clothing, all cloth. And if you have dynamic hair in there, which usually comes with one of my sets, you can choose both of these. Um, I wouldn't. You know, it's better to pose the hair by yourself. Anyway, but... uh. Click it and wait for it. What I'm going to do is let it run and then you'll see it pop back up and it'll be done. Alright, so at this point my uh, animation is finished, so I'm going to go ahead and turn the texture back on, give it a quick spin around here, make sure everything's in the up and up. And it looks good, so then I would just give it a render. And see how it looks. Ta-da! Easy peasy.